Today is Vlogmas Day 15, and I have a knit crate opening. Yes, I opened up the bag. I didn't I box. I haven't looked at it yet. I do want to say this. I was seeing all these other people opening up these nice, bright, shiny red bags with their monthly subscription. And I got a box. Oh well. Way to let the rest of us know we're chopped liver, Nick Gray. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I think you can tell by the look on my face I am not thrilled at all with this choice. They are calling this color Clementine. It is Vitalana's Heathered Chunky, and the colorway is Clementine. 100% wool, chunky weight, 60 yards, 100 grams. It's not soft. The pattern, well, let's just look at the pattern. Shall we? I don't consider that clementine. If I had a clementine was that was that color, it'd be pitched in the trash. That is more of a mustard yellow to me. Anyway, these are some of the lovely colors. You could have got a lovely green. This cowl is the knit pattern, and it's really hard to see. Um, the photography on this, they really needed to have someone that was blonde modeling this dark black cherry cowl with a nice light shirt so you could see it. And of course, that's not what happened. Here is the crochet hat, and uh, yeah, um, the feel of this, I wouldn't want it on my head, I wouldn't want it around my neck, however, I may make a pouch and felt it, and then of course they show you, because you get the the book that has colorway for all the boxes, um, the nice socks, yarn, beautiful colors for those. They're calling them holiday candy. And I think that's about it. And then of course this is the palette for next month. Like I said, I'm not too thrilled with the color. Um, I will probably make it into a pouch and then put a zipper on it so that it can be used for notions. It's not soft at all. It's kind of really rough and rustic. And then they also did include the cute little um, ball with the knitting needles in it. It's not too bad. I'll give them that. Just wasn't too thrilled with it. What can I say? Oh, today I'm drinking some what's called snappy ginger tea with lemon. And my honest, um, I'm going to give you a review of it. Um, there's very little ginger flavor in it. Um, it does say the ingredients are lemongrass, um, lemon peel, cinnamon, natural ginger, and lemon flavors. 
with other natural flavors like ginger lemon verbena, rose hips, licorice root. I can taste the hint of the licorice root, but what I taste mostly is rose hips and lemon. Very little ginger flavor to it whatsoever. And this is D by Bigelow. So I'm going to rate that as a one out of ten because it's just yeah. Um, I thought I would show you some of the things that we get when people bring in donations at the fire hall for the quilting and we get a lot of what we call orphan blocks and they may have been blocks that someone was putting together for a quilt and they may have put the quilt together but they had extra blocks they set them aside for something so there's this and of course that goes with that and they did a little different colorway and that one is a little different not by much just a tad and I've probably got about seven or eight of those blocks then they started mixing and matching and that this one I thought was rather interesting and they kept to pretty much a regular color base and then we have a couple of odd blocks you know like this like that and this And there are some, those of you that quilt, there are some designated names for these quilts. Um, blocks like Churn Dash, um, Crossroads. I don't think this is Jacob La Jacob's Ladder, but it's pretty close to it. So, yeah. So I got a bunch of those and I'm going to try to put them together to make a quilt. And like I said, we get a lot of those that are just orphans. Now these these are a mix of, like this is a cotton, and this almost feels, the purple feels like a linen. And we do go ahead and put these together. This one kind of feels like a linen as well. as does the orange. That almost feels like a burlap, but I know that's not burlap. And I think you can tell some of this fabric is quite old. Of course, these two are attached, and as you can tell, they're not quite the same size. And that, that kind of lets me know this is probably a beginner. They put this together. You 
and this. I believe this is flour sack along with this one and this. And I do have a bunch of those pretty much the same type um, that I have back in the back and you know I'll be putting those together. Generally if they are quilt blocks that we will not put together and give out to folks, generally what we will do is we will take those quilt blocks and give them to the Amish. The Amish many times will put these into quilts as well as polyester quilts, uh, polyester fabric turn them into quilts and then they ship them overseas to third world countries who need bedding. So um, you know we try to make sure if we can't use it for a general public you know here in the US that it can be used somewhere else so it's not going to fill a landfill um, some of the material we get isn't fit for anybody. Um, generally what we do is we do pass that on to mechanics who will use it to clean up grease or clean up. Um, and even the Amish will use it for it clean up in some of the areas that they uh, work in. So, you know, most everything we do get goes somewhere and gets used and is not tossed out. But um, I think you can see we have a lot of people when they get into grandma's house to clean it out, they'll find those things. And the first thing they think of automatically is bring it to the firehouse for the quilters, anything that is sewing related. We have many times passed on lots of lingerie type material to Amish seamstresses who can use it. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little peek into some of the things that we get when we get things from the fire hall. And sometimes, I mean, we got a lady that brought home a box. I mean, it is a box that's probably two and a half feet by two feet. And it is filled just with different size blocks cut out of material. So we do have someone that is taking that block and, you know, that box and putting blocks together to make a quilt or even cutting them down to use them somewhere else in a quilt. So, yeah, that's, you know, it's just the way that it goes. Sometimes you gotta find a way to get uh, rid of things. And we try, like I said, we try to keep it out of the landfill. That is that for that. Um, I do, I want to answer a question that Cheryl Boltz had asked on her Vlogmas today, where she is talking about uh, finishing up Hank and the uh, Charles Watkins story. She had asked if I did amakurumi. I have done amakurumi in the past. Used to do it a lot. Um, but because now I work with the prayer shawl group, I do the breast prosthesis. And with the prayer shawl group, most things that are needed are shawls, blankets, hats, scarves, mittens, um, those kind of things baby sweaters, baby blankets. Um, I do sometimes, if there's a quilt that's smaller than a lap quilt, we'll bring that over to the prayer shawl for a baby quilt. I don't do as much amigurumi for that because the amigurumi that they have chosen to do is the small comfort dolls. I don't knit tightly. And I don't like working with size 3, size 4 needles. So I don't make the uh, comfort dolls. Although I keep thinking, you know, I should take my small scraps and start, right, to make some comfort dolls. But uh, 
What I used to do in my older age, back in the 90s, the uh, last part of the 90s, I was a branch manager slash clinical manager slash visiting nurse for a home health agency. And yes, I held those three titles. Um, branch manager had moved up and into the regional um, management. So they were looking for a branch manager and they kept looking. They didn't find anybody suitable. And all of a sudden I was fulfilling the branch manager position, doing the paperwork for it, the paperwork for the clinical manager, which I was managing um, not only med surge nurses, pediatric nurses, but also um, psychiatric nurses in the practice. And I was also doing home visits because I didn't have enough med surge nurses. So I was generally working about 14, 15 hours a day. I worked generally every day for 30, 40 days in a row. And then I would have to request time off. And uh, they would tell me I couldn't have time off because they didn't have anybody to cover me. So I'd have to call in sick to get a day off. That's how it worked for about a, two years while I was there. Um, finally, we had a corporate lawyer that was in that was looking at everything. They kind of do this, you know, every once in a while. You have the corporate lawyer that comes in to make sure everything is all squared and everything is, you know, up to par with Medicare, Medicaid, you know, the uh, new home health nursing rules, regulations, those kind of things. And while he was in at lunch one day, my uh, desk secretary had asked him if he would bring me back one of the uh, notices that that just printed off for her. He brought it back. He looked at me and he goes, your name tag doesn't say branch manager. I said, I don't know. I've been doing that for about a year now. Um, I'm the clinical manager. He goes, how long have they been sending memos out with uh, branch manager on it? I said, you know, I don't know. We can go into the files and see because I keep all those. He went in. He looked. He goes, a year and one month. Have you been getting paid branch manager pay? Looked at him and I said, nope. Haven't even got a thank you. He looks at me and he goes, you're fixing to get a nice little check. So, um, he gave me branch manager pay for a year and one month as a lump sum from the company. Um, two weeks later, we had an actual branch manager being trained. So then, you know, that could cut back on my workload. So, yeah, that's kind of what I did in the past. Uh, so that's a little bit of get to know me. But as a side job, I not only did that, but the four hours before I'd go to sleep, I would sew. And the reason I was sewing is I was making bears out of fur, fake fur. I was also making, uh, cloth rabbits, cloth deer, cloth bears, cloth kitties that I was selling once a year at a very big craft show. And it brought in probably about four or $5,000 extra um, from that one thing. And I have stopped doing a lot of that because it was very tedious. Um, if you've ever cut bare, bare parts, 
any kind of animal parts out of fur or fake fur, you know you can't cut the front. You have to cut the back of the hide or the material of the part that's the hide and you have to use a razor. And usually I used a rug cutter. You draw the pieces on and then you would cut by hand. And then I sewed, sewed those by hand mostly. Um, so that, yes, I have done some amigurumi. I have done some critter making. I enjoyed it, with the exception of all that extra fur and fuzz going up my nose and everywhere. My cats wore the fuzz. They'd walk past and, you know, fuzz that I was cutting. So I was cutting it would fall off and then they'd run through the house with the fuzz because they didn't know what had landed on them. So yeah, <laughs> I did some things like that. I have one more thing that I would like to talk to you about. I saw a video last night from Wanda of Rolling Through Life. And I was, when I saw it come up, I went to look at it. And it, I think the title of it is, Accusations Can Stop Now. And I thought, what on earth is she talking about? I said, this must be really bothering her. When I went to see the video, see, I'm getting mad now, so I'm tearing up. I tear up when I get mad. I'm one of those ugly cry people when they're mad. She took her walker out of her wheelchair, walked across the room, and then proceeded to attempt to walk back to her wheelchair on her own without the benefit of the walker. She fell. And when she fell, I screamed. The reason it angers me is people are asshats. People are idiots. And really, you folks just need to stop. If someone says they need a wheelchair or any kind of device to assist with walking, sitting, standing, whatever they have to do, that's it. They need it. There's no reason to start any kind of nasty rumors or nasty crap about it. For many people, it's hard enough to have to use a cane, a walker, a wheelchair. It frustrates them. It frustrates me when I see people saying they don't need it. So, I got angry when I saw that video. And I kind of told, I told Wanda, I said, do not ever do that again. She could have seriously gotten hurt. The reason I screamed is when she fell, there was a table here. She'd have hit her head just to prove to some asshat that she needs a walker. It just, it bothered me, so I got angry. Sorry. <laughs> so Wanda, carry on. Just ignore those ass hats. And uh, if you're an ass hat, maybe you need to go uh, to your local rehabilitation center and ask them if they can give you a nerve block for your, uh, oh, let's say from the waist down to where you can't use your feet for about four to six hours. Try that and see what kind of life it is, it is and how hard it is. So, um, yeah, sorry. All right. Gonna stop on that negativity and my frustration and show you today's angel. Today's angel is called just a Christmas angel ornament. It is done out of number three thread and I believe a 2.75 hook or maybe 2.7. I didn't have one, so I used a three-point um, millimeter hook. 
and so she's a little larger. Have you noticed the theme here with these angels? I don't always use what they tell me to use. So, yeah, I use something larger. And I had someone when I had um, talked about using the hairband with the other angel, <laughs> suggested I use the milk ring from the uh, milk jug. Well, I would have if we'd had milk. <sighs> you know, like I said, you use what you have to use. <sighs> All right, folks, I'll see you again um, tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. And remember, Choose to be kind and don't be an asshat.